Well, we are back up on Tolbin Lake. And I mean, if you love to walleye fish, you've heard of Tolbin Lake, probably one of the better fisheries around as far as a fishery that's capable of producing really, really big fish, you know, fish over 12 pounds. I think the last time I was up on Tobin Lake was probably, goodness, 20 years ago or more. <laughs> it's been a while. And when we came up here before, we trolled crankbaits. And uh, we got up here oh, a day and a half or so. We started out trolling crankbaits, didn't do well, caught a couple pike, started jigging, jigging a shiner, and uh, started catching more fish. And as we fished and put in our time here, it just seems like the best thing we found is just spot locking and hanging a jig over the side and just letting these fish run through. And massive migrations of fish that come into this river. And Tobin Lake's enormous. And this river, these fish, you know, the shiners come into the river and then the walleyes come into the river. And so middle of October here right now, and it just seems like this river is just starting to fire up. But uh, excited to be here. For sure, for sure. You know, and it's such an easy drive to get up here. Um, what a cool destination. I mean, the scenery's gorgeous, the leaves are changing, and fall fishing at its finest. Absolutely. You know, Tobin Lake is a, is a massive body of water. It feels a lot bigger than what it looks like when you look at Tobin Lake on a map. And when we came up here, you know, we had 30 mile an hour winds. And so a lot of the lake, you know, really wasn't accessible to us, you know, as far as just, you know, fishing the wind. And then the south end of the lake is really shallow. And so, you know, you take 30 mile an hour winds over shallow water, <laughs> stay away, you know. And so we fished the river a lot just to get out of the wind. And, you know, it appeared to us that the fish are just starting to move into the river. You know, these fish follow the shiners. You know, the water temps are just starting to drop below 55 degrees for the first time. And I anticipate that this bite's only going to get better and better. But, you know, that's the beauty of this. So, is, you know, you go up in the river and get out of the wind and, you know, we found some fish. There he is. There he is. <laughs> just picking it up off the bottom. Come on up here. Oh yeah. Giving you a little tussle. Yeah, they do. Oh, beautiful fish. Yeah. There we go. Thank you, sir. You got it. All right. Well, yeah, talk about a a dead stick approach, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> we've tried a lot of different things. And, and you know, we've seen this on the Winnipeg River, we've seen it on the Rainy River where big migrations of fish come through. You just sit in one spot, fish are very lethargic. I mean, if we move it around, they don't seem to want it. Drop the jig over the side, let it sit on the bottom and just hold on to the rod. Maybe a few little twitches, but just a little tick. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> Pretty easy fishing, especially if you have spot lock or an anchor, about as easy as it gets. Right up here. Yeah, just got a nice build on them. Thank you. We started spot locking and basically just getting on these river bends where that reduced flow and you know 18 to 20 feet of water seemed to be the average depth and uh, just spot locking and you know and hanging jigs and minnows over the side of the boat and we started catching fish and once we got dialed in on that and saw how light the bites were you know we were probably getting some bites when we were slipping and moving in the current you know either missing fish or the fish wouldn't hit it you know where there's times where you know you just have to sit in one spot and just pat that jig on the bottom or just hang it on the bottom and these fish are just coming through you know just waves of fish you know and as long as you're running traffic as long as you're marking fish you know you're, you're going to catch them as they come through there he is Got him. There you go. They are biting so light. Boy. It's like a nice fish. They fight hard in that current, that's for sure. <laughs> Fun. Oh yeah, just a respectable walleye. Oh goodness, I mean they're just beautiful fish. <laughs> Another dandy. Just the tiniest little tick. I mean, I'm just using eight pound nanofill. I mean, just a tick. 
check I mean uh, you'd think you had a 12 inch walleye plane with it and you set the hook and that whole rod bends over kind of a neat bite show you off here yeah gorgeous walleye Can't beat that, huh? Look at how fat these fish are. These fish have been eating good. Look how healthy that fish is. All right, we'll get her in the water. Just a chunk. There we go. All right, Tony. All right, I'm coming with the net. Ooh, good fish. Nice fish. When you can't lift the, when you can't pull the rod tip out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're just digging, Jason. See if you can come in the back here. Move back, go back, come back. Bring them out here if you can. Oh, I'm trying to keep them out of the motor. It's yeah, gonna be a nice a fish. Good fish, oh yeah. Oh yeah, bring them out this way. Yeah, that's a nice fish, Tony. Bring them up. There we go. Hey! Oh, that's a chunk. that's a Tobin like fish, buddy. <laughs> Yo, this is fun. <laughs> On a jig with straight braid, it just like a this is accentuates the, the bite and the fight and everything. Great job. Get that fish. That out is of a handful. Look at that fish. <laughs> just be cooked him. Yeah. Oh yeah. The old thumper. And thumper jig. I was sick of watching you catch those big fish, so I just switched over <laughs> to the same jig that Jason was using, that uh, 3 8 ounce thumping jig. -er. That is a beautiful fish, Tony. Look just at them. Just, they're so girth. thick and healthy. I mean, yeah. they're just perfect. Well, that was fun. <laughs> They dig, don't they? Oh, that was something. <laughs> that fish in this current, I would have guessed, was even bigger than it was. <laughs> yeah, it is fun. Can't get enough of this. One of the biggest things I was excited about coming up for this trip is on my last uh, trip to Tobin Lake, um, I caught my four biggest walleyes ever. Um, it was an ice fishing trip, and we had four walleyes over 30 inches, including a 34 and a half inch walleye. Um, so the big fish potential up here is unreal. I don't know of many other places where in one day an angler could put together 10 feet of walleye in just four fish. You know, four fish over 30 inches in a day is pretty insane. And that potential is what had me so excited, you know, unable to sleep to come up here. And although we didn't get into those true giants, it was that thought that on every single thump of that rod, it could be a 34, 35, 36 inch fish. And we got into some dandy fish but it was that anticipation and excitement that every single bump could be, I mean, a 14 pounder. Love this time of year and all the leaves are turning. You know, you, your days are numbered. We don't have that many days like this and it's over. It is a beautiful place. And you know what's cool about this? We came by, there's two trailers in the parking lot at the boat ramp. Came by one boat, so there must still be another boat downriver, but we don't have a boat with an eyesight of us. Nope, it's been absolutely crazy for the potential of the fish that are out here that we don't see more boats or there isn't more people. I mean, it's a gorgeous day. Temperatures are above freezing and the wind isn't howling and uh, we've got this whole stretch of river all to ourselves. It's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing to me. Amazing. There we go. Got him. Oh yeah, coming with the net. That looks like a good fish, Tony. Nice work. Just picked it up. Just picked it up right off the ground. Just another beauty fish. There you go. <laughs> it's 
sure looking like one of those Tobin Lake Giants. Boy, that fish is getting bigger. Barless hooks, you just want to <laughs> you want to keep it tight. Look at that. That is good stuff. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Wow, is that cool? There he is. He's got color. <laughs> There we go. All right. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Beautiful fish. Boy, they are chunks, aren't they? Pull her out here. We brought the big net along because you bring a big net when you come to Tobin Lake. Look at that. That is, <laughs> that is a walleye. Just gorgeous. Ah, look at that. I just love the build on these fish. That is just a gorgeous, gorgeous walleye. There she goes. No worse for wear. And yeah, I had two shiners on. Just gobbing them on, which if you've used shiners, you know how easy they fall off the hook. <laughs> and it must be a smell thing. I mean, I've been hooking them through the tail. I've been hooking them through the back of the head. However they stay on. Yeah, isn't that delicious? There's been a lot of slime. I don't know if it's on the bottom or if it's coming out of the dam upstream, but we've been getting a lot of debris on the line, and so that's been a big thing. We've been just checking these jigs often because you can be fishing and be fishing for half an hour wondering why you're not catching nothing, and then you reel up and you're covered in slime. I can't stress enough how light some of these bites are. I mean, it's just a, just the tiniest little pickup. We're not even really even jigging it. We're just holding it and just lifting it up and dropping it, but we're not doing much with that jig. They just seem to be wanting it just laying there and see on the active target. I mean, these fish are just coming up in waves and this migration must be so impressive. Like geese in the sky, you know, all the fish are, that are swimming underneath us. It's just amazing. Well, and it amazes me how you can actually see the species of fish in some cases. You know, we've seen sturgeon swim by. We've yeah, seen oh, yeah, you can see. Like, we've had a couple of big pike swim through. We've had quite a few sturgeon swim underneath us, and then these schools of walleyes. You know, so the program's pretty simple, you know, where we were just using a 3 8 ounce jig. You know, and I like to use the jigs with the blades or the props, you know, either a whistler jig or a thumper jig. I just feel like a little bit extra flash, you know, especially in, in big rivers when there's current. I just feel like that helps. You know, the water isn't really dirty, but it's not really clear either. You know, it's just got a nice color to it. You know, I feel like that, you know, extra vibration or flash, I think helps these fish find it. But the bites were so light and, you know, it's funny when you're jig fishing, I would never say that braid is better than mono or that mono is better than braid. I feel like they really both have an important place. I feel like there's times where I'll do much better with monofilament, for example. There's times where I'll do much better with braid. And sometimes on tough bites, monofilament can be the answer because it's almost like the fish can grab onto the back of that minnow and just keep sucking up on it. And by the time you feel the fish, the fish hasn't quite felt you yet, you know? And so there's times on tough bites where actually mono will work way better because with braid, you can feel a lot more, but the fish can also feel a lot more too, where they can feel that something's wrong. But this is a situation where, you know, it seemed like just the way these fish just gave it just that tick pickup, it seemed like, you know, thin diameter braid, especially fishing in the current, I mean, that seemed like that gave us a big advantage. And a lot of times too, you know, I'll use like a fluorocarbon leader below the braid, but out here, it didn't find that it really mattered. I started tying just straight nanofill straight to the jig. You know, the water's got enough color where it's not like these fish are gonna see the line. It's all about sensitivity. And if there's something that's sensitive, it's, you know, eight pound nanofill tied direct to a jig, I mean, you feel everything, you know, and, and I think once we tuned into that, that became pretty important because, you know, the bites were just, I mean, it wasn't a mushy bite where there was just weight, it was just a little bit of a tick, you know, and I think the other thing that was happening is, you know, using frozen or salted shiners or any type of a shiner, you know, they're not very durable where those fish would just come up and just pull those shiners off that jig, you know, and so you had to stick them right away. You know, we tried wading, we tried lifting the rod, you know, doing different things as far as setting the hook. And what we found is 
if you even imagine a bite, just swing, <laughs> you know. And uh, there are so many times where just the lightest little tick and you'd swing and you'd even know for sure if there's a fish and all of a sudden that rod would just bend over and that rod tips in the water, just a big fish. You're thinking, wow, <laughs> you know. And so it was a really cool bite. I mean, it was, it was, it's always fun catching fish on a jig. And uh, when you can catch them on braid and just feel everything like that, that's pretty cool. Good fish. Ooh, that looks like a good one, Jason. That's a good one. Wow. Fish doesn't want to come up off the bottom. <laughs> Look at that. These fish are so strong. Oh, come here. I'll gladly be your net man. <laughs> oh, come here. Oh, yes. Fun. Oh, yeah. Nice bit. Nice walleye. They're just chunks. Whoa. They are just so strong. There we go. Oh, thank nice you, sir. Fish. Boy, look how fat these fish are. These fish just have a build, don't they? What's interesting is we, I don't know, we were in that 18, 19, 20 foot range. We probably sat for maybe an hour and we started, well, we just weren't, we weren't seeing much. And so we just, came up into 17 we just slid up a little bit i don't know if just the day progressing maybe that water's warming up a little bit but water temperatures are getting you know below 55 degrees and so boy look at that though just a just a chunk of a walleye wow that is just a fun place just a beautiful beautiful average size pretty fish too i'm liking this place said earlier it's been about 20 years since I've been here. I don't know what's taken me so long to come back. Get this jig out here. I'll show you here. I mean, that's a 3 8 ounce jig, which, you know, in this current, you just want something that's going to find the bottom. And these thumper jigs just have this little blade on the bottom. You put that in the water, and it's just twirling. And I, I like using blades and props. You know, Whistler jig is another great jig you know in these big rivers for fall walleyes but i just i was just sitting there basically just sitting there next to the bottom and that little blades flickering and that shiners are hanging off the back of it but i think that little blade really helps Yeah, we got fish coming underneath us here right now. Oh, there he is. It's a good fish. Let me get back here. Boy, he's standing down nice. Yeah, it is. That is fun. That'll warm you up on a cold fall day, you know what? Oh, look at that big old marble eye. Yeah, nice, just a nice quality fish. There we go. There you go. <laughs> I needed longer arms, my friend. Water temps are starting to get down to about 55 degrees. And that's just kind of a classic deal where you've got this massive lake and these fish barbless hook pops out nice these fish move up into these rivers after the shiner migration but yeah look at that chunk that is just a gorgeous beautiful walleye gorgeous walleye here we'll get her in the water there she goes get the jig out of the net here See, that well, we're away. not going to be doing this that much longer with bare hands you know what Thumper jig, that's just a big river fall walleye catcher right there. Whew. Might have to put gloves on. <laughs> We're up here with Trails End Outfitters and uh, we have Barry Prowl uh, provided us with the lodging opportunities. We are literally right on the shores of Tobin Lake. 
a gorgeous cabin, beautifully decorated, all the amenities. We had the wood-fired stove to kind of warm the old bones at night. Great cooking facilities. We were able to run in town. You know, we had steaks. We were on Canadian Thanksgiving. We had to have pierogies. Uh, we had, you know, fabulous breakfasts. We had comfortable beds. Everything was here. Um, it's a great place to stay. It's, it's affordable and accessible to anyone. And uh, if you're looking at a true big fish trip or the potential for a big fish trip, this is a fantastic place to come and explore. I know I'll be back. Well, <laughs> perfect, <laughs> perfect end of the day. You know, you're up in Canada, you gotta eat fish, right? The Canadian shore lunch. But we're staying at Trails End Outfitters, I believe is the name of the place. Yep. And uh, these guys are busy, you know, getting ready for the whitetail deer season. That's a big thing up here, but beautiful cabin right on the lake, right on Tobin Lake here. And so really a pretty sweet setup. It's gorgeous, and uh, after the performance we did, had today, yeah. we, find, we finally get to come home and make dinner for ourselves. Yeah, what a great way to end the day. What a great way to end the trip. <laughs>